Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, it's all about wheelies and wheelie control. If you're running a circuit, a street, or a drift car, well, this function's not really for you. But if you're running a huge horsepower dedicated drag car, this stuff could save your suspension setup, your engine, your, your car, and you from utter annihilation. Because drag cars have such insane power and incredible grip through the tires to the really sticky racetrack surface, they've got a tendency to lift the front wheels up off the ground during the launch. This results in the driver having to abort the run or hold onto it and hope that the car setup and the torque management are configured in a way that brings the car safely down to earth. When a drag car initially launches from the start line, the front wheels can lift up off the ground and get carried in the air until the car settles. This could be at the 30 foot mark, the 60 foot mark, or even carry the front wheels all the way to the half track. How high the car lifts depends on several things. The power the engine makes at each RPM point, the weight of the car, the speed of the car, the suspension setup, the center of gravity, and the wheelie bar setup, if the car's got them. Yep, that's right. Some drag cars have bars with little wheels that hang out the back of the car. With the idea being that as the car lifts, these wheels make contact with the ground and resist the force pushing the nose of the car in the air but they're not allowed in all categories of drag racing. Long story short, when a car accelerates, weight's transferred from the front end to the rear axle. When the weight transferred exceeds the weight required to lift the front of the car, the front of the car will lift. The higher the front end lifts, the less effort's required to lift it even higher, resulting in potentially catastrophic results. But don't get me wrong, the excitement of seeing a car hold a wheelie until half track or initiate a wheelie at half track and pass the finish line with the front wheels off the ground is pretty amazing. So we don't want to limit wheelies altogether. And that's where the wheelie control function comes into practice. We use a laser ride height sensor which is mounted to the front of the car looking down at the racing surface to determine the acceptable vehicle ride height. Then we can initiate a cylinder cut based on how high the front end of the car lifts. The laser ride height sensor is wired into an analog input on the engine management system and displays its measurement in millimeters or in inches. Once we have this value, we configure the software so that we allow the front to lift higher at the beginning of the race, then tighten the allowable height by the end of the run. This way, it makes racing as safe as possible. We've also got this tricky function that allows us to hold the cut for a programmable amount of time once the cut events occurred. We do this to stop the car riding the cut meaning it hovers at the cut percentage height, essentially reducing engine power the entire run. It's better to hold the cut for an amount of time, then the front end makes contact with the racing surface and because the car's accelerated to a new speed by then, it typically won't lift the front tires for a second time. But if it does, we'll be there to bring it back to earth. The hardware setup for the laser ride height is pretty straightforward. There's a laser ride height, that's got mounting holes on the side. For the demo, we've got it zip tied on the front of the car. You would probably bolt it onto the front of your drag car. It's got three wires that come out the back. It's got a 12 volt supply, a signal ground, and a zero to five volt output. That zero to five volt output changes depending on the distance the sensor is from a hard surface behind it. And it's also got a little laser there to help you determine exactly what it's looking at to measure the height. This sensor will measure up to 500 millimeters. For the example today, we've got our little remote control car here. I'm gonna lift the front of it up. That laser is seeing that the car's lifting. Then I've got an IGN 1A coil over here firing away. We can see that in our spark tester here. On the software, we're gonna initiate a cut depending on how high the car is. So we can see that spark starting to drop out the higher and higher the car gets. When the car slams back down, we should see full spark straight away. Before we lift the car up, we'll come across to here, we'll go to our wheelie control table, and we'll set this up first. So typically we've got our cut percentage and an ignition retard value based on how high the front of the car is. 
This value over on the right here, how much ignition timing to pull out depending on the height of the front end and how fast we're going, so the road speed. This table on the left here is our wheelie control cut percentage table. Now we can choose to cut just ignition, just fuel, or fuel and ignition. If we're cutting 50%, that means that we're cutting 50% of cylinder events, meaning that we will severely limit the power of that engine. You'll audibly hear it misfire. Then as it comes back down to the ground, power will be reintroduced and away you go. Typically a table would look something like this. Remembering that I actually don't have road speed here, so all of our stuff is gonna be at the zero road speed point on the table. We limit something like this. We'll linearize in between here. Down the bottom, we're gonna see how much our cut percentage is doing, what sort of ignition retard we've got. We'll see our actual ride height here. And then down here, one of the other features on the Haltech is it's really nice, engine limiting function. If the thing does have a misfire and the ECU is implementing a cut because of maybe a rev limit, a boost limit, engine protection, wheelie control, we can data log this channel. It tells you why the engine management system started dropping cylinders in order to limit power or protect the engine or the car or the driver. So we've got it all set up. Let's get our pretend drag guy here. I'm gonna start lifting the front end. You can see in our software here, I've lifted it two, three, 10 mil. 20 mil, nothing's happened. It's pulled one, nearly two degrees of ignition timing at this height. Oh, there we go. It's dropped two, three, five, 10%, 15, 20%, comes all the way up high. All of a sudden, whoa, 100% cut. That means that we've got no spark at all. Drops back down, no cut again, she takes off. Before I was talking about a timer that starts happening when the wheelie cut percentage occurs. Basically what happens at the moment, if I lift this up, as soon as it slams back down, we've got no more cut, the car starts accelerating again. If I come down here under torque management, which is actually the same area of the mapping where we can do our target drive shaft RPM curve and our target engine RPM curve, down the bottom here, timer enable. Let's put that on at 0.3 of a second. What that means now is that when the car lifts up, that cut percentage is going to occur. The ECU keeps looking for the highest cut percentage that gets recorded. Then, because the car drops, because we've got that percentage cut initiated, that delay means that it's gonna hold the highest percentage cut that it saw for three tenths of a second. That means that the car's got time to accelerate and pick up road speed, and then it won't have enough power to lift the wheels off the ground when the power is fully reintroduced, hopefully. Well, there you have it. The function in the software is fairly straightforward. The sensor, fairly straightforward. Getting your 3D ignition cut and percentage cut tables fine-tuned for your particular drag car, now that's where the magic is. So you'll spend a little bit of time configuring that, but once you've got the shape of your ignition correction table and your percentage cut table sorted, you won't be smashing any more suspension parts or breaking any more sumps in your drag car. Well, that's it for today's episode. If you've got a function of your Haltech ECU that you'd like me to look at in a little bit more detail, hopefully it gives me an opportunity to buy another little remote control car or helicopter or boat or something like that. Put your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what function you want me to go over and I'll make sure to make some more videos. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Scott, catch you next time.